Honda CB650F. Overall rating. Honda's all new, completely revitalized and reinvented CBR is a CBR worthy of the name. The original CBR was such a success simply because it was a good, affordable, all-round bike, with a touch of Honda class. Just as much is true of this newcomer. It's not perfect. No bike is. The snob in the end is the adjustable forks of the old. The steering lock's a little restricted. The standard screen's too low for my six single quote three. Though taller version is available as an extra. The clocks look a tad budget. And Honda's new generation switch gear with indicator and horn reversed from the norm. Still a norm. But it's still a peerless bike for all reasons at a value price that will disappoint no one. Ride quality and brakes. The new CBR's chassis is equally impressive. Where the outgoing CBR600F had multi-adjustable inverted 41mm forks the newbie has won non-adjustable versions, presumably to save money. Even so, and with spring and damping rates wound up a little stiffer than on the CB, they work just fine, complementing the beautifully precise steering. The new CBR is a dawdle to ride normally, light, stable and easy. And yet, when you wind up the whip, it's both rewarding, engaging and never particularly gets out of shape. Engine. Identical to that of the earlier CB650F is being an all-new 649cc4 focused on improved torque and cleaned up looks, with external plumbing replaced by internal water channels. Header pipe design inspired by classic single quote 70s CB400-4. Though no Gruntmeister, however, meteor, it may be that old the new ZBR is still, ultimately, a middleweight four characterized by a free ribbon, U-burst mock delivery, it pulls away easily from minimal revs. You need to rev it and slip the clutch a bit, of course, that's the nature of this type of beast, but nothing extreme or difficult. 3K or so does the job, and from there on up the new ZBR builds utterly predictably. If you want to potter and travel, 3-6K is ample. A bit bolder and brisker will have you opening its lungs more crisply to eight. And if you want to thrash back and forth between country corners, 9 to 10 now delivers enough unit, howling fun to satisfy most. Build quality and reliability. CBRFs have always had more class than most middle weight all-rounders, and though no VFR this latest version has enough to please. Fit and finish, though built in Thailand, as good on this evidence as any of Honda's Japanese-made wares. Jury's still out on reliability, it's too early to say. Insurance, running costs and value. Whichever way you look at it it's a decent amount of bike for the money with a fair sprinkling of Honda quality on top. Not quite as classy as the original, but the world's moved on. Should hold its value better than most. 2. Equipment. The twin LCD displays, though hardly cutting edge, are an improvement on the last version's single LCD sweep and with clock, fuel gauge, autos, tacho, speedo and more. They lack only a gear indicator, while the full carbon inner fairing panels look good. Riding light and taillight both legs, while accessories include carbon look hugger, seat cowl and front mud guard, 35 meters top box, seat bag, rear carrier, heated grips and alarm. Yes, the CBR is built to a budget, but you have to look hard to see any giveaways, single LCD sweep and with cloth, fuel gauge, autos, tacho, speedo and more. They lack only a gear indicator, while the full carbon inner fairing panels look good. Riding light and taillight both legs, while accessories include carbon look hugger, seat cowl and front mud guard, 35 liters top box, seat bag, rear carrier, heated grips and alarm. Yes, the CBR is built to a budget, but you have to look hard to see any giveaways, built to a budget, but you have to